Hello, everyone, and welcome to Van Chicago Land Stories, Episode 2. This episode is sponsored by Dispenses Castle of Toys. Girls and boys, come and see the greatest toy store in history. Dispenses Castle of Toys. It's a castle. Dispenses Castle of Toys. It's a toy store. Dispenses Castle of Toys. It's tremendous. Come to Dispenses Castle of Toys. Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois. Dispenses Castle of Toys is a quarter mile north of Oak Brook Center, Route 83 and Roosevelt Road. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, this is the... Van Chicago Land Stories ep- episode two for this podcast. I am your host, Pete Castanis. I am the admin of the Van Chicago Land Facebook page. I'm also the uh, writer for my blog, which is Van Chicago Land Stories, which is the same name as the podcast, and that's located at www.vanishicagoland.blog. I am also everywhere on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit. And I have my own YouTube channel under my name, Pico Stas, with my videos are posted there. You can check them out if you like, and I hope you enjoy them. I recorded the first podcast a few days ago, and it was very short. It was about seven minutes, and I was very nervous. So uh, today I will speak a little, speak about things much longer, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, today I will be speaking about a department store that was once located in the Roseland neighborhood of Chicago on the south side, and it was called Gately's People's Store. Anyone who grew up in that area on the south side would remember it fondly. Uh, I lived in the neighborhood. I moved in the neighborhood in 1969 when I was six years old. And uh, the Roseland neighborhood was very vibrant at the time, and we lived above a shoe store called Shift Shoes. My father owned the property there for many years, and it was located on Michigan Avenue, and Geekly's People Store was on the corner of 112th Street. That store was one of its kind. It had everything. It was like a mall all by itself. It had four floors, maybe five. I'm not sure. And that store was magical. My mother shopped there all the time, and her friends as well. Uh, Gately's People's Store was owned by James Gately. Uh, he was the, like I said, he was the owner, and when people shopped at the store, they usually saw him, and he would uh, help you, which is very unusual for an, an owner to do that. And he helped my mother a couple times. He, he's seen, I have never seen him. Uh, so I've, right now I've seen pictures of him on the internet. I'll describe the store uh, as much as I remembered. Uh, The first floor had uh, a jewelry section, and I remember the Timex display. It was like it's it was revolving and it lit up, and it showed these beautiful watches. And I bought my first watch there, which was pretty cool. Also on the first floor was there they were selling school uniforms. I went to parochial school. When, during my you know grade school, and it was a Greek school, and was required to wear school uniforms. And my mother bought uniforms for me and my brothers. Let's see what else I'm trying to remember. Uh, they had a cafeteria there. They had a huge book selection. On the second floor was uh, selling women's clothes, and uh, right there was Santa Claus during the Christmas season. And that was the first time I met him. I was a little nervous meeting him because uh, strange people intimidate me or give me some strange fear. There's a photo somewhere in my house with me and my brothers on Santa's lap. And uh, I, I cringe every time I look at it. I look very uncomfortable. He was a nice man, but uh, that's, how I wa- that's how I was. <laughs> on the third floor, they sold appliances, television sets, uh, vacuum cleaners, washing machines, refrigerators. I remember seeing the brands of television sets. Uh, they're no longer on, like Zenith, Admiral, Magnavox, Quasar, uh, R- RCA. I'm sure RCA is still around. 
I'm trying to think of others. Well, that's about it. And last but not least, I want to mention what was located in the basement. And at a grocery store, my mom shopped there all the time, but she told me that it was expensive. Some of the items were expensive. So she shopped elsewhere for groceries. She only shopped at Gately's when it was um, an emergency. And uh, also there was a donut machine, which was on a conveyor belt. You would place the donuts on the conveyor belt and it would drop into hot oils. And you actually watch them fry. And a lot of people find that fascinating. And so do I. And they still remember it to this day. You know, you would get fresh donuts, real hot, any kind you like. And there was a popcorn machine right next to it. And that smelled so good every time you entered the floor. They also had a toy department there. And I was, they had them all these wonderful toys on display. I remember Tonka toys were on display, board games. It, it, the room looked so colorful. It looked like you were in a, a toy box. And it was, it was very nice. Uh, Gately's has opened in the late 19th century. And it was in business for a lot of years. Uh, unfortunately, the store closed uh, 1980 on Michigan Avenue. They opened another store in Tinley Park, Illinois, and uh, I never went to that one. It wasn't the same as this, the one that's located there in Michigan Avenue. So uh, they, that store in Tinley Park closed in 1994. Uh, about a couple years ago... I received a phone call from a TV station, and they asked me asked me permission to show one of my videos on YouTube about Gately's People Store, and I asked why, and they said uh, because it caught it, it it was engulfed in flames. I go, oh my god, that's horrible, and I said yes, and uh, so I recorded on my DVR and I showed the report, and they mentioned my name and the. Uh, played portions of my video, which was wonderful. I loved it. But I was also sad because the store, the building is gone. and They demolished it after that. There was a parking garage behind it, but that was demolished years before. So it, it was, yeah, like I said, it was, I was heart sick because uh, I loved that story and a lot of people did, but the neighborhood changed and uh, everyone fled so now it's just an empty lot, and I have no idea if anyone's going to do something to that lot. Fortunately, they salvaged the sign that was on the store. That sign never left. And and some society, I don't know, historical society in, in the south suburbs saved it, and it's stored somewhere. So thank goodness for that. Uh, on Michigan Avenue, where Gately's located, there were other wonderful businesses. There was Kresge's, there was Mailing Shoes. Uh, across the street from Gately's was Three Sisters. It was a clothing store. A lot of people remember that. They had some beautiful clothes. And on 111th Street, uh, right north of our apartment building, was Chicken Unlimited. And they had the, the chicken was awesome. I loved it. And they, and they also had Wham Burgers, too. So... Uh, that's about it for Gately's People Store. Uh, right now, I will talk about uh, Talman Bank. Talman Bank was started by, I think, it bound, let me double check what the date was. Oh, yeah, it was founded in 1922 for his name. His, the man's name was Ben Hobohack. And, uh, it was located at 51st Street near Tomlin Avenue. I believe that's the Gage, I don't know if it's a Gage Park, Gage Park neighborhood. It could be. Uh, later on, it opened a bigger branch, a bigger building, I think in the late 50s. And it was located at 55th Street and Ked, South Kedzie. And that was there forever. It was a beautiful building. They had uh, a parking garage. You go underground, which was cool. I never... I never went to the garage. And they had these wonderful coins on the windows, pennies, nickels. It was gorgeous, like a works of art. And they had donut holes. So you can walk in and you can grab yourself a donut hole. And, and if you had an appointment with a, a banker or 
You want to deposit some money, withdraw some money. The donut, the donut holes were there on the table, on display. Uh, they opened more branches. They opened. There was one where I moved to Ashburn neighborhood in 1974. Uh, actually, that branch opened years later after I moved there, and we we banked at that branch, and then it, then LaSalle Bank bought it, and then now it's Bank of America. That location near Fort City Mall is gone. Is gone. Uh, just just an empty building. But a lot of people love that bank. It was very personal. It was very personal to a lot of people. They helped out people in the neighborhood. Uh, no, hardly any questions asked. So it was one of a kind. It was beautiful, very beautiful. Another thing I will talk about now is John's Garage Restaurant. Uh, they had three locations, I think. Uh, one was in Fort City shopping center on the south southwest side uh schomburg uh and vernon hills i can't think of the other location i could be wrong when that opened at fort city mall in like about 78 79 uh i only went there for a couple of times i applied for a job there i didn't get it and uh the menu was looked absolutely divine the the two items on the menu that was remembered by a lot of people were steak on the stick. It looked like a shish kebab. And the potato skins. They were great. Uh, I've eaten there a couple of times. It was there for a long, long time. Uh, it fortunately closed maybe in the late 80s, early 90s. And the last time I went to John's Garage is at Schomburg. And I was at travel school, so they, the teacher treated us to lunch. I don't know. We the school was located. The travel school was located in Lombard, Illinois, and then we, they drove us all the way to Schaumburg, which was pretty cool. And I think there was a fish tank. Somebody mentioned there was one. I didn't. I don't remember seeing it, but uh, I do. And it was, the food was wonderful, and it's a shame it's gone, because people still talk about it to the, this day on Facebook all the time. Because I run a uh, group called Classic Fort City Memories slash Peacock Alley. Someday I'll do a podcast episode about that, what Fort City was, how it was like, and then Peacock Alley. And uh, let's see. So John's Garage, I remember the gas pumps in the front and... Uh, you know, it was very, the decor was beautiful. Uh, there are pictures out there, and people love seeing that. So that's pretty much uh, those three topics I would talk about. I would talk about a few th more things, like about myself. How uh, people ask me how did this uh, Facebook page started, which was va which is Vanish Chicago Land. Uh, about 2012, well, actually 2011, uh, I was sur surfing. Facebook, and I noticed a page called Dispenses Castle Toys. And it was a toy store that went out of business. It was located in Oak Brook Terrace. And I saw the page, and I was wondering, why are they create, Why do they have a page about a business that's no longer there? And I found that, later on, I found out it, it was a tribute page, and they had pictures of the toy store. Next door was Kitty Kingdom, the amusement park. So I thought to myself, why don't I do something like that? Why don't I create a Facebook page that had businesses in Chicago that were gone? So the page I created was in May 2012. It was called Chicago Extinct Businesses. It was named that after many, many years. And uh, it started slow. I started posting photos. And then about two years later, in 2014, a... A man from a local newspaper contacted me and wanted to do an interview about the Facebook page. And they said, sure. And uh, the interview was published in the paper and my page took off. There were like 32,000 likes in one day. Uh, previously, it was like about, I don't know, 15,000. I don't remember. And people started noticing it. And I was, I was interviewed on some radio shows. Sometimes other art, uh, 
articles for a newspaper. Uh, a lot of people that I know, like my friends and people I go to my church, they don't they don't realize it's me. I have to tell them, or they have to figure it out themselves. It's kind of fun that way. But I think but the majority of people now know who I am and what I do. So anyway, the Facebook page uh, became very popular. I have 29 others. I don't post every day because that's too daunting. I post maybe once a week, twice a week. And then I started creating the website, which is uh, www.chicagoextinctbusinesses.com. I shut that down about a couple of years ago. So I, sh- I changed the name from Chicago Extinct Business to Van Chicago. And I also signed up for Twitter, Instagram. I did that. And it's growing popular. Uh, a lot of people in the entertainment field, locally and nationally, have contacted me and seen that, and they love it. Celebrities that used to live in Chicago, now they live in Hollywood, New York, elsewhere, and they love that as well. Uh, The reason I'm doing this podcast is originally I was going to start a podcast in 2020, but, you know, I had health health issues, so I decided to do it uh, this year in 2021. There was so much not, uh, turmoil last year with my health and what was going on in the world. So uh, the uh, sorry, I, I forgive me for pa- pausing all the time. I'm a little nervous. So uh, as I do, as I record more episodes, I'll get more more at ease, more comfortable. And then uh, so. That's basically it. So this is episode two. It's a more. Of, it's not a rough draft. I'm getting the hang of it. As I record more episodes, I would add more information. I'll be more at ease. Like I said before, I'm very comfortable adding music, background music. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Dispenses Castle Toys. I thought that was fun. So right now, I'm going to sign off. And uh, hopefully you will hear this episode. It's on Spotify.com right now. Uh, It isn't on the other podcast uh, platforms. Hopefully it will as my audience grows. I will post the podcast episode on my social media. I'll do what I can and let everyone know. So this is episode two of the Vanished Congoland stories that it's about Gately's I spoke about Gately's People's Store, Talman Bank, and John's Garage Restaurant. And hopefully I will hear from you, I uh, hope I will talk to you soon on episode three. It should, might be next week sometime uh, if I have time to do it because I'm very new at this. So this is uh, Pete Costanis. I am the host of Vanished Congoland Stories. And I hope you have a great day. Oh, one last thing. Today is March 25th, and it's Greek Independence Day. This is the bicentennial year of it It uh, for democracy. As to my family and friends, Zito Elada. I hope I said that right. My Greek is rusty. I don't speak it often. Okay, so th- I am signing off now, and uh, this will be the end of the show. I- Thank you very much for listening and hope and uh, and hope you can tune in. This is Pete Costanis signing off. Bye bye now.